Morning everyone, I uh, hope you're well. And thanks Matt and the brilliant Radio Centre team for the invitation today. Um, and also thank you to you guys because I'm sure that many of you in the audience today have been supporters and part of Radio Player for quite some time. Um, I'm going to take you on a whistle-stop tour of the future of Radio in Car and what Radio Player is doing to help keep radio strong in that environment. Just going to, there we go. Now for those of you that don't know who Radio Player are, we're a non-profit organisation supported only by radio broadcasters. Um, our founders over 10 years ago were the BBC, Global, Bauer and Radio Centre and those guys are still our board members today. And we were founded on the principle that um, broadcasters should compete on content but share and collaborate on technology and that is still true in all the work we do today. Now we do have mobile applications, we have uh, web players, smart speaker integrations, but our main focus now is to keep radio strong in car. And when we talk about that, what I'm going to focus on today is really the broadcast radio experience in the car. It's DAB and FM. At the heart of what we call hybrid radio, that's where broadcast radio works with the internet to create a fantastic experience. And we do that um, by partnering with some of the major car companies. And on that front, we've had quite a lot of success. So we are already partnering with Audi, VW, BMW, Porsche, and you guys are clearly all Porsche owners, so you'll be delighted that you've got a great radio experience in your car today. Um, and through those guys, we are powering the radio experience in 53 models and over two and a half million cars on Europe's roads now. Um, and that's great. And actually, later on this year, oh, we missed a slide there. That's not going to work. So I was going to say, we hope to be announcing another four uh, partners. Um, so we're building scale and we're growing. Um, now, when we're doing that work um, with the car companies, we are doing it bearing in mind what the broadcasters need and what the listeners need in the car. So we know that individual broadcasters, no matter how big you are, can't have those direct conversations with the car companies who are working on an international scale. We know that you want radio to be easy to access and prominent. You need to know more about how people are listening to your stations in the car. And we also, which is of absolute importance, we want the listeners to have the best possible experience. So from a radio player perspective, we're, we're having those conversations with the car companies and some of the big tech companies on your behalf. We're always pushing for radio prominence in the partnerships that we have, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about that. We're also starting to collect some user data in the car about how people are listening, which platforms they're listening on. We're going to be sharing that with our broadcasters in the coming months. And at the heart of it, we want to create that best possible um, experience uh, for radio. And we think that's hybrid radio, as I said before. Now, we know that broadcast radio is by far the most popular audio source in the car. And we know that because we've researched it. Over a year ago, we did a big piece of consumer research in major markets. Broadcast radio, more valuable to listeners in the car than streaming services, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay or anything else. But there are big changes coming to the car and to car dashboards. And that is, it's important that we understand what they are and react to them. Now the picture you see here is of the dashboard of a Polestar 2. You may have heard of it. That is a new electric vehicle brand from Volvo. And this car kind of encapsulates all the changes that are happening at the moment in uh, the automotive sector. So um, first of all, it's an electric vehicle and we support that move obviously to electrification. You see a nice big color touchscreen dashboard that's gonna become the norm in cars. This car has built-in internet connectivity and new cars will come with that. This was the first production car to launch with Google's Android Automotive Operating System. That's the software that sits behind the dashboard that powers everything you see. Um, and that's really important. And because they're using that software, the dashboard becomes an app ecosystem. So you don't have to tether your smartphone up to the car anymore. You can download applications direct to the dashboard. And so everything is an app. And within that environment, you can still see a radio button. That is the broadcast radio experience in this car. It's still there, you can still access it, but it needs to be brilliant and it's not as good as it could be uh, at the moment. So there's a bit of work to do and there's more competition for radio in this environment. But I just want to show you a bit about what we're doing with one of our partners and that's BMW because it will give you an idea of what we think a really good radio experience should be. 
So this is the BMW iX50, it's a new electric vehicle. And a few months ago we sat in it and um, we took a video. I just want to show you that so you can get a sense of what the experience is. So you can see here on the left hand side, this is the home screen, radio, big radio tile, really prominent. That's the default in those cars. It's configurable, but the default is that radio is prominent on the home screen. Now what we're doing with BMW is using your station's metadata, so the information you provide us, the station logos, station name, track, artists now playing data, that kind of thing, to create a really good experience where you're listening to broadcast at the heart, but getting that information over the internet. And you can see on the left hand side, this easy search, this is an integrated A to Z station list. So we're integrating DAB and FM stations into one A to Z list for easy search. Um, now obviously the clever people at uh, BMW, when you go into the now playing screen, it's really great that they've, they can match the colours in the background to the colours of the brand. That really brings out the station branding as well, which, which we think is fantastic. And then if you're providing us track and artist now playing information, if you send an image with that, we'll show it. But if you don't, if we get the information about the artist that's playing, we can also show an artist image from a, a fully licensed artist image library that we've built up. And again, it just kind of enhances the radio experience in the car. So that's a, a quick look at what we're doing with BMW. We think that should be the kind of minimum experience um, to, to build on. And we think uh, it looks pretty cool and we're really proud of it. Um, now, I did mention that um, in uh, cars with uh, Android Automotive at the moment, there is also the ability for an app ecosystem and our focus is broadcast radio. But we have also, because we have consumer apps, there's an expectation that Radio Player will be able to be downloaded as an app, a streaming app, in these cars. So we have done the work to build a Radio Player streaming app. You can see it there. We've integrated with the big app stores. But we know that by far the, most, uh, the, the biggest amount of listening is to broadcast radio. And that's where our focus remains. Now, what about the future? That's kind of what we're doing now with BMW. But what about the future? And I just wanted to give a little look at what's coming uh, with regards to the entertainment experience in connected cars because we need to think about that and the environment within which radio is going to be competing and there's some, there's some big, big changes and big things coming up. So this is actually from, from BMW, they envisage a big 30 inch, 30 inch uh, drop down cinema screen for the passengers in the back to view films and, and video and audio and the way that um, uh, media is being consumed in the car will be through, I think, more like this is a kind of a Netflix-like experience from a company called Zinc, providing a platform to access gaming, video, and audio. And gaming is actually a very big trend when it comes to, to cars, and a lot of people are focusing on this. Now, this sort of shows um, a service which will be a sort of cloud gaming service where people in the back, the kids, will be able to access thousands of games in the back seat. And this is actually available today, sort of virtual reality as well. And you do, obviously, you wouldn't want your driver with one of those on. <laughs> Um, but this is available today in Audis. This is from a company called Holoride. It's quite cool and, and the, the VR moves as you move around in the car. Now, I'm just showing this to give you a sense of what's coming in the car and, and against that backdrop, what does radio need to do? Well, we, we believe there's a few things we need to focus on. Obviously, it needs to look great and that's what I said about metadata. The information from your stations is vital to that. We know it needs to be prominent and that's something we're fighting for all the time. We also need a really uh, slick way into some of the on-demand content that your stations provide. So while you're listening to live radio, you need to be able to easily access either catch-up content or podcasts that you're producing. And that's some work that we've, um, we're going to have to do with the car companies. We also need to be clever about how we use technologies like artificial intelligence and so on. For example, for more, more clever recommendation services. But that said, we, need to, we absolutely need to make sure we retain the simplicity of radio. It needs to be clever and use the technology, but be simple and easy to access. And on that note, I just wanted to finish by um, saying that although I talked a lot about the technology that's coming into the car, actually, cars are changing and things in some cases are becoming more simple. This is the Citroen Ami. This is an ultra-low cost um, electric vehicle and they have stripped out everything. There's li it's literally a steering wheel and four wheels. There's no dashboard screen, there's no speakers, um, there's nothing in this car apart from that, and it's a couple of thousand pounds, 
Um, but if you want to access any features for the car, you download an app. And on that app, there is a big prominent radio button. So even in environments like this, we need to make sure that radio is prominent, easy to access, and a good experience. And I, I did actually, I've test drove, driven one of these. It took me about half an hour to fold myself into it. <laughs> it was a bit like a giraffe getting into a shoebox. But once you're in, it's actually a really good experience. And because they're so cheap, it's something we should be supporting. So look, that's a really quick tour around what's going on about the future of radio and car and what we, what we need to do to keep radio strong. I do need to finish by saying that we, we need to be clear, radio is by far the most popular audio source in the car. So we're building on a fantastic base. Although there are some threats, there are some huge opportunities for radio as well. And I think also commercial radio and advertisers. And we at Radio Player are fighting the good fight on your behalf, but we need your support uh, to keep radio strong in connected cars. Thank you very much.